Hi everyone, welcome to a video about IWD or individual wheel drive. Now this is a technology used by some of the new startup EV only four wheel drive manufacturers such as Atlas and Rivian, but they don't really talk about it as much as they should because I think that it's an amazing technology and will really make a huge difference to vehicle performance on and off the road. So I'm going to explain in this video what IWD is and why it's so great and also contrast that with what we do at the moment so you can really understand the differences. This is how individual wheel drive looks conceptually. What we have at the moment is combined wheel drive, four wheels, and then we've got a motor driving a gearbox and then axles, differentials. With individual wheel drive we have got again four wheels but this time we have got four motors and probably a gearbox at each wheel and a computer to control the torque or the power to each of those wheels individually. Now to understand why it's going to be so good we need to take a look at what we have at the moment. So here we have a pretty simple axle, um, one wheel at the either end of it and we turn it turn the shaft here and the wheels turn and that's great that can work perfectly well very simple gear arrangement however um, if we go in a straight line you can see that both wheels turn at the same time and that's great but going around the corner you can see that the outside wheel has to turn at the same speed as the inside wheel and that means that this outside wheel here scuffs and skids as we go around the corner. Now that is absolutely no good at all for vehicle handling, it works in a light model like this because you get a lot of understeer, the car, the car plows on, stress on the drivetrain, tyre wear, um, higher fuel consumption, all sorts of problems. So this sort of simple arrangement can't really work. What we need is a way for wheels to turn at different speeds and we actually have that with something called a differential which um, is this arrangement of cogs here. Now you can see here that as I turn this round the corner that wheel can stay static and then this one can turn at a higher speed so we've actually solved the problem and yet at the same time we can still turn both wheels with this shaft. So surely that would be a perfect solution. Well, it is, provided um, you're not into performance driving either on track or in any form of four-wheel driving, because this differential here um, suffers from a major problem, which is as soon as one wheel is easier to turn, it sends all the, in effect, drive or what we want talk to that wheel. So if I turn this, you can see that that wheel's hard to turn, this one's easy to turn, and just spins and there's no drive to that wheel. Equal resistance on both wheels, turn the shaft, both turn. Now, what's actually happening is that the differential is equalising torque. So however easy the easiest wheel is to turn, that's how much torque the other one gets. So with this wheel in the air, it's very easy to turn, and that's the same amount of torque which is sent to, the, to this wheel over here. Not much. Now, this is a problem um, in all sorts of driving. So in four-wheel driving, it's really common to have one wheel in the air or with low traction, and then that wheel just tends to spin like that, and then no torque, in effect, gets to, gets to that one. Um, and in performance car driving, when your car goes around a corner, the inside wheel has a lot less weight than the outside wheel, and then that can start to spin up like that and then the outside wheel where you've got um, traction doesn't have the to torque to drag the car out of the corner. So differentials are a real problem for performance vehicles. Okay, now to demonstrate this, I've built two models. Both of them are electric drive. One of them is conventional wheel drive, the other one is individual wheel drive. Okay, so let's take a look at the two models. Here's the individual wheel drive and here's the combined wheel drive. Now, they are four by two. Um, the same concept applies as if they were four wheel drive versus two wheel drive. But um, one of the interesting things is because you're individually controlling each wheel with this one, if it was four wheel drive, how can you do that? You actually need um, really computers to synchronize each wheel depending on what sort of input you want to make, turning left, turning right. So I've just made it two wheel drive for simplicity. So you can see straight away that the combined wheel drive is more complex. We've got here um, more cogs, more differentials. We've got a differential lock, which I'll explain in a moment there. Whereas the individual wheel drive is much simpler. You've really just got the motor just driving a wheel. So let's talk about the individual wheel drive one sorry, the combined wheel drive one in a little bit more detail to begin with. So we've got 
here, the motor, um, turns a reduction gear, we've got a differential, and what that allows the wheels to do is to turn at different speeds going around the corner. So for example, this one can, can go a bit quicker than the other one going around the corner, um, yet both are driven as I demonstrated with the, with the previous model. Now, uh, we've also got here a differential lock. Now, if I put those cogs over there, so these two cogs are engaged like so, that basically reduces, well, eliminates the effect of differential and forces these two wheels to turn at exactly the same speed as you can see there, but then that means that you don't have that differential effect, you can't really go around a corner. Okay, so that's the combined wheel drive with the individual wheel drive um, vehicle. It's much simpler, there, there, there's no differential, there's no differential lock or anything, it's just literally a motor driving a wheel and that's it, nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so with individual wheel drive we can operate both wheels forwards, backwards or just one or even in opposite directions like, like that. Okay, now you can see that the differential is turning the two front wheels right if i was to just slow this one down you can see the other wheel continues to turn and we're going to put this vehicle on a ramp and you can see there what's happened um, as the vehicle goes up the ramp i'll just drag it up a bit further then that wheel lifts off starts to lift off the ground has less traction on it and the, the differential just goes you know what i'm just not I'm going to equalise the torque between the two wheels and that's not enough torque to this wheel to get up the ramp. So there's your first problem with a differential. Now we can actually um, solve that by putting these gears in place. Now that acts as a differential lock which forces the left and the right wheels to turn at exactly the same speed. So if I do that, let's see what happens there. And I'm going to stop it before it runs off the table and dies. Okay, so that, that's actually solved the problem, um, except that because we now don't have a differential effect, we're back to this version, oh, sorry, this one here, which is that we don't really turn corners. So what that means is with a differential lock, you've got to lock, lock and unlock um, the differentials depending on what you're doing. Now there is actually another solution for this, and that is called um, brake traction control. So. I'll show how that works there. So here we've got this wheel madly spinning and computers on the car detect the relative speed of each wheel. Now because the differential actually um, equalizes torque to the left wheel and the right wheel, what we can do is make this wheel harder to turn and then however hard that wheel is to turn it gets more torque and then that increases the torque on the opposite axle. So the harder this wheel is to turn the more torque that gets. So what the computers do is they actually apply the brakes. I can sort of do that like that and you can see that the car just goes up. I'm not pulling it up, I'm just slowing, slowing that, that wheel down and then that starts to increase the torque on the other wheel. I've got another video where I explain that in more detail. So that's brake traction control and brake traction control is fairly effective um, because it's you know getting to the point where it's almost as good as a cross axle differential, differential lock and it's better in some situations but it is a reactive system and again it's just more technology working or sort of to try and fix the differential along with limited slips, locking differentials, um, torso and brake traction control, all of these things there are designed to work around the limitations of the differential. Now if we look at the electric vehicle then um, what we can do here is we can actually individually control each wheel to whatever speed we like, which is pretty amazing. So if I was just to drive this up the ramp, whoops, go on, line up. You can see there that because I'm forcing both wheels to turn, in effect, I've got a locked, locked differential. I could actually force that wheel to go in one direction and the other wheel to go in the other direction like that, which is how Rivian and others do their, their tank turns. So this is why electric vehicle individual wheel drive is going to be amazing, because you can have anything from a completely open differential, which is what we call this, which, oops, always picking up the wrong one. Um, 
which allows the two wheels to be completely um, open in effect or fully locked which is these two forced to turn at exactly the same speed there um, and that will just open up a massive amount of capability because when a vehicle goes around a corner with a differential you're still sending the same amount of torque to both wheels but with electric wheel drive what you can do is actually speed up this wheel a little bit and then almost skid steer your way around the corner as well as turning the wheel so that will actually again reduce fuel consumption improve handling and um, massively improve capability on or off the road something which is just not possible with um, a differential system like this i've picked up the right one there now there is something called torque vectoring which uses really sophisticated clutch packs inside or around the differential to vary the torque to each wheel um, and that is effective but again it's a workaround it's a complex workaround it's still working around the differential whereas this you've just got the purity you just apply more or less torque to the left or the right wheels now there's other advantages of electric drive getting away from pure individual wheel drive and one of those is that you don't actually need a clutch with um, an internal combustion engine the minimum that speed the engine is running is about 700 rpm at idle and you can't really switch it on and off all, all, all the time so you've got to have some form of clutch to take that spinning shaft from the engine and engage it with something which is stationary now there are systems where it sort of do the idle stop but even then they get the engine running and then they engage the clutch and then they go off so that's not really a solution whereas these tend to be almost clutchless so you don't really need um, a clutch to anything like the same degree you do in an ice car and then there's gearing as well the electric engine is got has got good torque or turning force from about 0 to 20,000 rpm whereas the effective range for a petrol or diesel engine is more like about 1500 to 4,000 6,000 rpm depending whether it's pe petrol or, or diesel there so therefore you need probably no gears or fewer gears I personally think that most electric vehicles could do with two gears but probably no more than no more than that now another advantage of individual wheel drive is there's going to be no torque twist now when you have a, a system like this you turn these cogs and you put a lot of turning force or, or torque through that drivetrain and that actually twists the chassis as the vehicle starts to accelerate um, when that torque is applied now you can even see that on, on remote control cars um, um, and also on, on drag races and even if you can't see it visibly that force is still there with electric wheel drive like this then um, you don't have that sort of force very much to begin with because you're more directly driving each wheel but each um, motor can actually cancel out each other um, one and you see the same sort of thing in aircraft as well with a single engined aircraft when that propeller starts to rotate it actually rotates the aircraft around a bit with a twin engined aircraft you can have contra rotating propellers and then the torque force balances and then there's no need to sort of um, have, the vi have the aircraft sort of swayed to one side or yawed to one side right I should say um, as, as it takes off so with electric drive you can kind of think of the vehicle as someone climbing up a mountain on all fours and exactly the right amount of torque will go to each wheel absolutely instantly and um, whereas with a differential it's very hard to, to achieve that sort of effect and also if the vehicle kind of drops off a ledge like that you could put regeneration on maximum and really sort of gently bring the vehicle down with um, a, a vehicle that's driven by an internal combustion engine you're going to have to typically apply the brakes or do something else there because otherwise it'll just run away down the hill with um, a electric vehicle you've got very precise control over that torque and over that speed there plus whenever you are in coast mode or going down a hill you're actually regenerating um, electricity to charge the battery something which can't be said of an internal combustion um, vehicle so I've talked a lot about the advantages of an electric vehicle and look there are many it's going to absolutely usher in a new dimension of vehicle performance for four-wheel drives and on-road vehicles but I'm a petrol head at heart and I really love the idea of a high performance V6 or V8 completely analog no electronics no electrics no well, minimal electrics um, and then just pure person and machine interface there and for me that's never going to get old I'll always love that but that does not take away from the fact that electric vehicles are the way of the future and that they offer really significant advantages over internal combustion engines so 
Let's see what happens in the future. Stay tuned to my channel. Um, thank you for watching. Hope you find this video useful and please follow me for more similar content on cars, four-wheel drive towing and whatever else might find the readers, readers might find interesting. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>